Hello, hello, and welcome to this game overview of the classic game Ticket to Ride. This version of the game is set in San Francisco and comes with colorful, bright game pieces to reflect the city. This game is for two to four players ages eight and up. The object of the game is to gain the most points by claiming routes between two adjacent locations on the board, by successfully completing a continuous path of routes between two locations listed on your destination ticket card, and in this version of the game, collect tourist tokens from key locations around the board. To set up, place the board in the middle of the play area and have each player choose which color cable car they would like to represent themselves. With the colored cable car, there is also a point marker token that should be placed on the zero spot on the score tracker around the board. There are five locations on the map that require tourist tokens. Stack the number of tourist tokens according to the number of players, three tokens for four players, two tokens for two, pl two and three players. You can place whichever of the seven types of tokens you want on the five red spots. Set the remaining two sets aside for now. Shuffle the transportation cards and deal two of these to each player, their starting hand. Place the rest of the cards near the board and flip up the top five cards in a row beside the draw pile. If three or more of the five cards are fairy cards, these rainbow ones, discard them all and flip up five new cards to replace them until this doesn't happen. Shuffle the destination cards and deal two to each player. Destination cards will show you two locations on the map that you can try to connect for more points at the end of the game. The more challenging the connection, the more points the card is worth. Players choose to either keep one or both of the cards and keep them face down as they work on them throughout the game. Any discarded destination cards get placed at the bottom of the destination card pile. Players can draw more throughout the game, so keep this stack handy. Determine play order however you'd like, and then give the last player and the second last player the remaining stacks of Taurus tokens. They can place these on whichever location they would like, of course taking into account which locations they may be most inclined to visit. Now gameplay begins. There are three possible actions a player can take on their turn. First is to claim a route, the main objective of the game. To claim a route, you must have enough transportation cards to satisfy the whole route between the two adjacent locations on the map. For example, here you would need two black cards in your hand, here you would need three green, here you would need a single red card. If you wish to claim a route, you discard the appropriate number of cards and place the cable car on each of the spaces on the route. Players can claim any open routes on the board, even if it's not connected to a route they've previously made. As the game winds down, if you don't have enough cable cars to fill a route, you cannot claim it. Some routes are double routes, meaning that there are two tracks of the same length. A single player cannot control both routes. Gray routes can be claimed with any set of one color, so they still need to be all the same, but it can be any color. Fairy cards are wild and can replace one or more solid colored cards to make up a set to claim a route. These routes on the map, however, require fairy cards and some other combination of colored cards. Points are scored immediately for any routes that are claimed. You can refer to this table here on the board for how many points are scored per claimed route. When claiming a route, if one of the two locations has a tourist token on it that you do not have, you can claim it for extra points at the end of the game. The more tokens, the more points. Each player can only have one of each type of token. Your second option on your turn is to draw two transportation cards. There are no limits to how many cards you can have in your hand. You can draw one from the top of the deck and one from the face-up cards. The instruction book is a little unclear here on whether you can take one from each location or if you can draw two from the pile or if you can only get two to make up one face-up card. Anyway, we suggest that you make a house rule on this one. Immediately replace any drawn face-up cards. If at any time there are, there are three fairy cards in the face-up draw area, immediately discard all the cards and flip five new ones. If the deck empties, shuffle the discard pile and make a new deck. Third option on your turn is to draw another destination card. These cards, that these are the cards, again, that show you two places that you have to try to connect. As I said before, these cards can get you more points at the end of the game if you're able to make the continuous route connecting the two locations. However, if you're unable to make the connection, you lose the point value on that card. Keep that in mind when taking on the destination card challenges. When drawing a destination card, you draw two and choose which one you want. You need to keep at least one, but you may keep both. Destination cards cannot be discarded once they're in your hand. Play moves clockwise until one player has two or fewer cable cards left in their supply. After this point, each player gets one last turn and then the game is over. Routes claimed should already be scored, however this can be double checked at this time. Next, players should reveal their destination cards and add or subtract the appropriate values. Finally, consult the tourist token table here and see how many additional points players get for their collection of tourist tokens. The player with the most points wins, and there's no official tiebreaker, but a game of rock, paper, scissors usually does the trick. 
Ticket to Ride is an easy to learn board game that is a great stepping stone for new or younger gamers. There are also special color packs for cable cars that you can buy to customize your game. We called in our senior box expert to give us his opinion. Apparently good for scratching, not ideal for sitting in. Be sure to check out the Comic Hunter or the comichunter.net for all your gaming needs. Happy gaming!